Hi, we're Pip and Pop from Australia. We're here in LA making our show for Corey Helford Gallery. Opens on January 13th. It's called Here Comes Sunshine. So for this show, we've used about 300 kilograms of sugar that we bought locally, and we coloured it all ourselves with pigments into probably about 150 different shades of colours. And we've also bought lots of craft materials. We use a lot of glitter. Um, what other kind of things? Cakes, mini artificial cakes that we buy on our travels, like from Japan and Korea. It usually takes us two, sometimes three weeks to create an installation in the gallery. And before that, in our studio back in Australia, we make lots of things. Um, yeah, so for probably a couple of months, we've been making different objects that are in, in the installation, things out of air dry clay and um, iPhone and pom-poms and glitter, all sorts of, oh, and lots of sugar in the studio as well, gloopy melted sugar, all sorts of, um, yeah, colourful things. The worlds that we're creating are kind of based on things that we're interested in about utopia and places that exist in stories and mythologies and, and also in people's imaginations. So there's kind of landscapes that might exist or they might not. So we're kind of trying to create our own, our own kind of imagined landscape, kind of utopic landscape. It's a happy place. And something that is maybe a brief escape from yeah. the everyday, you know. Um, and some, like some of the differences in surface is just down to when you find a new material. Mm. You think, I can use that in the work, you know. What's it going to look like if instead of using in children's modelling clay we use this crazy rainbow string that we found? Or, you know, it's just down to finding a material that you get excited about. Yeah. Think that'll work. Yeah, I think we're, our process is driven by our materials and, and what we find on our travels. We're always shopping every time we go to a new place. We check out like the cheap stores and the flea markets and the uh, craft stores, anything. Yeah, one of our <laughs> I guess I'm interested in creating a kind of utopia because they're the stories that I'm really fascinated with. That we read stories about mythologies from different cultures and um, Creation stories. Yeah, creation mythologies and sometimes children's stories. Um, yeah, those, those kind of, I guess, places that people imagine. And there's one that I really love, which is Lao Lekker Land, or there's a German Schlaraffenland. And it's like a place that's um, created entirely of food. So you can eat anything, everything you can see, you can eat. So these kind of utopic places were created in medieval times when there wasn't enough food so people imagined oh what would a paradise be like and then that I think that's kind of a mythology that's that is throughout time in lots of cultures so I'm really fascinated with those kind of stories they also have this I guess other side that um, there's also I guess a warning about ex excess and gluttony and what happens if you can have everything that you desire so I think that's interesting for us as well like when we make the work we think about Oh, where is that point where the work becomes too excessive, there's too much colour or too much, too many pretty sparkly things? Is there a point where it pushes it into something that's almost too hard to, to look at or to, to digest? The work is not permanent, it's just temporary and it only lasts for the duration of the exhibition. So we create it on site, people get to see it and then at the end it um, bits get uh, return to us and the rest of it, all the coloured sugar gets swept away and that's the end of the work. So you have to see it while you're here and um, yeah, and it's gone. I guess which relates to that some of these ideas about utopia and paradise, places that don't actually exist or they're fleeting or they, um, yeah, that, there's lots of great stories about people finding, finding a paradise and then leaving and when they come back it's disappeared so they can't ever find this place again and I love that idea of like oh did it actually exist maybe it did maybe it didn't and yeah I like I like that the work is temporary and people have to experience it and then that's it it's gone and different shows last like the show at Corey Helford's up for five weeks I think there's been other shows that have been up for three months mm. it just depends how long the show goes for there's been shows that have lasted a night. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs>
The first moment when you pull the first object out is a little bit kind of heartbreaking, but after that, it's actually really fun to sweep the work and it's almost like creating a new work, like you start sweeping the colours together and you start seeing all these other kind of beautiful things happening, so... We've got yeah, lots of photos that we've taken Yeah, during, yeah. During we always get a bit excited and start taking photos and going, oh, look, isn't that beautiful? And yeah, yeah, I think it's fun. It's another part of the process, so yeah, I think we really enjoy it. Like we're influenced by stories and mythologies, um, ancient maps, um, kids' TV shows. <laughs> Colour, just crazy colour combinations. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we're driven by colour a lot, like in our work and the way we put colours together and looking at the colours of a place we go to. I think like it, every work is really influenced by the place that it's made, so when we arrive in a place, we always go shopping first and buy some new materials, but we're also kind of, I guess, looking at the city and, and picking up on things that we notice, they're not necessarily major things but sometimes it's a colour combination, the type of colours that a city has or the light or... Some of the houses, like we were in Silver Lake for the first week and some of those beautiful houses out there that were like combinations of pink Pinks and, and green, green, yeah, and great combos of colours, yeah. And that, so that it seeps into the work, I think. Yeah. I think of it as your work and I'm your offsider. You know, it's definitely your practice. Yeah, I feel like it's more of a collaboration. Um, yeah, I mean, I drive. I think I was sort of the driver of the work and instigate things and projects and research. And yeah, Chad comes up more on board in the studio and then during installation, Chad does all the like really detailed drawing parts of the work or where you see the rainbows going throughout the work in this work. That's all Chad's very fine handiwork. Yeah, but it definitely comes from your <laughs> brain. My brain. <laughs>